Donna Finney is the HBU head women's basketball coach, and she was named the fifth head coach in the program's history in April of 2013. As a native of Edinburgh, Scotland, she has became the first international coach ever to be the head coach of an NCAA Division I basketball team at Houston Baptist University. And she is the winningest coach at the Division I level in HBU basketball program's history. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm That's, really excited to, to be here today and talk a little bit about our program. I dig your dialect. It's just <laughs> amazing. It's different. Not what you normally hear in Texas. How do yeah. the kids like it when they hear a good Scott? Um, well, it gets more Scottish as I get angrier <laughs> on the court. So it depends uh, <laughs> what point in practice or what point in a game that you actually hear me. But uh, it definitely, the louder I get, the more it comes out. So now, yeah. when we think about from Scotland, I mean, tell us your history. I I started playing basketball in high school. I'd, I had actually started playing netball, which I know is not really a popular sport over here. But um, I didn't even know what basketball was. And then the first day in high school, I was walking down the corridor and a teacher yelled at me and he was pointing at me and started yelling and I thought I was in trouble. I'd just come out of a classroom and, and uh, he said, you, you need to be in the phys ed block at 4 p.m. today. And I was like, wow, for what? I didn't even know. <laughs> and he said, you'll meet me there. And I, of course I was like, okay. Um, it turns out he had played basketball for the Great Britain team and obviously saw that I was 5'11 and you know, a first year in high school and he was gonna try and get me to play whether I'd played or not previously. And it kind of rolled from there. I mean, he was, you know, he and the other PE staff there were really my inspiration to start the game. And um, I started playing club ball. I played on our national team. Um, and this is all in Scotland? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, after my first year at university in Scotland, I was offered a scholarship uh, to play actually in our conference again at Lamar University. And so I went to Lamar and I, I uh, played over there and loved the experience. Um, but when I came back, back to Scotland and finish my degree there. I just, uh, I felt like I needed to do something else for the game um, and I decided to get into coaching. So I started coaching my sister's team, which um, for anybody watching today is never a good idea to coach siblings <laughs> because the, the, arguments, the arguments that stem from that are not fun. But uh, you know, it gave me a taste of coaching and I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kept, you know, getting more and more involved. I went through my coaching certification process with the governing body over there and they kind of got me involved with the national teams as an assistant coach. And the plan was that I was going to be an assistant to the head coach for a few years with the thought of taking over. But after the first year of being there, he said, you're ready, I'm going to retire. And I was kind of thrown into it at that point. And this is in Edinburgh? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, and obviously we had players from all over the country, but you know, most of our practices were there. But uh, he said, I'm, you know, you're ready, let's, let's do it. And when you say country, you mean the U United Kingdom, I guess? Scotland. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. Scotland, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so I, I coached our national underage teams for 10 years and uh, went to many European championships. Um, had a great time with the girls, just watching their development and their growth and tried to, uh, you know, just push them to be the best they could be. And I actually helped a lot of the girls come over here and play. Did um, you really? Yeah, just from my experiences playing over here and some contacts I'd made, and then through coaching contacts. Um, we had seven girls come over here and play for the Division One level. Um, I actually helped some boys come over here and play as well. And I just enjoyed kind of helping these kids to fulfill their dreams of playing collegiate basketball. But there was always something in my head that said, you know, I want to try and coach at that level um, because the European Championships is such a unique experience to be at. I mean, you coach, some of those tournaments have 20 different countries. You're coaching, right. you know, nine games in 10 days. It's an amazing event to be part of. Sure. But I wanted to challenge myself a little more. I felt like I'd done everything I could do over there. Um, and when the opportunity came here to join HBU as an assistant, it literally was a no brainer for me. Um, you know, I felt like I could come in and really help make a difference, particularly with recruiting because of my international contacts. And I love Houston. 
Um, Do you? you? Know, I love Texas. It's so strange. When I left Lamar, I always, you know, I, I was home when I was 21 and I kept saying, I'm going to live in Texas. Like, I am going to be back in Texas. And my family would laugh at me and yeah. say, why do you want to live in Texas of all places? You know, like why? And I just always had a feeling I was going to end up back in Texas. And so I felt like when the call came, it was just fate almost that I had an opportunity to come back here and I've uh, not looked back. No, oh, that is, then. what a great story. I mean, did you have a cowboy hat in Scotland? I didn't, and I need to get some boots because <laughs> it's rodeo time and I need to definitely buy some boots. But I mean, it, I, I just love the people here in Texas and that was the main draw for me, um, you know, just so open and welcoming. And since I've been at HBU, that has been the main thing that uh, I talk to about to everybody are the people here and how welcoming they are. Yeah, Houston is um, uniquely different mm -hmm. in uh, the quality yeah. of people, how they mm -hmm. treat one another. Uh, yeah. I say that again and again, but I say it sincerely. I've never yeah. been in a place like it. I've been in hundreds of cities in the United States and all over the world that no place like Houston. Mm -hmm. Well, Coach Finney, we are so delighted that you are here today. Now, how did the how did the transition actually happen? I mean, HB Houston, you're in Edinburgh, Scotland. How did that happen? Well, I remember doing my Skype call uh, when I, you know, talked to the committee, and uh, I think you know Sharon Saunders will tell you she probably remembers this too that. Uh, one of the questions they asked at the end when we kind of got through the formalities, we were talking about, well, what do you like about Houston and what restaurants do you like? And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and I said, uh, Olive Garden? Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really, I mean, I, you know, I didn't know. And she goes, oh, well, there's one right around the corner from the school, so you'll be happy. And uh, we were just joking, but I just, I knew on that call just the kind of people that, you know, were going to welcome me to HBU. And I mean, I know those people that were on the committee, Clay and Sharon, et cetera, have just been so supportive from day one mm -hmm. um, of my transition because it is hard coming from another country. Sure. We have a lot of international players that have gone through our program. And, um, but I think the transition from another country to HBU is so seamless because you can connect with people here immediately. It's not exactly. a big school. You know, you can, you get to know, you know, for the students, their classmates very quickly and for faculty and staff, it's just such a great place to be because everybody is so welcoming and, and supportive of that transition. So you came in as the assistant coach. Yes. And then in 2013, April, you became the head coach and now the winningest coach at the division one level in HBU's basketball programs history. That's significant. Yeah, I mean, we've been really blessed that we've had some great kids in our program. Um, and I have great staff. You know, I think when anyone watches our staff at work, they'll, they'll probably mention the word energy. A very young staff, but um, every day when you walk in our office, there's a lot of energy. In practice, there's energy. And that comes across, you know, with our kids as well. And so um, we kind of preached to our players that you have to play with passion and energy. And um, our staff definitely give that off, and, and I, you know, I'm very thankful for who we have on staff and the leaders that they are for our players. Now, how do you how do you coach? I mean, what's what's the secret of your coaching? Um, I think connections with players. You know, I'm very big on that personal connection with players because I feel that if a player knows that they have your trust and vice versa, that I keep saying this, they'll run through a brick wall for you. But, you know, when I think of the people that have gone through our, our young program, um, you know, we have gotten so much out of those kids um, that they probably didn't even think they themselves could do. And uh, you just that belief in them and that trust in them um, really kind of gives them that confidence uh, to go out and be the best they can be every day on the floor and in the classroom. You know, I'm so proud of all of our players for the academic standards that, that they keep setting, you know, to be, in the top 25 in the nation for Team GPA multiple years in a row is... Wow, now let's repeat that. Yeah. Top, in the top 25 GPA, yeah. Houston's basketball and yeah. girls program? Yeah, we've our, our highest level was fifth in the nation, our Team GPA, but we've, we've featured in there for the last three, four years. Um, and, and that's an incredible achievement for yes. our players because obviously HBU is a challenging school it is. academically. It is. But, you know, our girls have done a great job and, and we recruit the kind of player that 
we're not going to have to chase the class. We're not going to have to get on to pull their books out. We're not going to have to say, have you turned in a paper? We want those motivated players who have academic goals, who have goals, you know, that they see themselves, where they see themselves following their time here at HBU and that they're working hard towards those goals. And mm -hmm. so um, because of that, we are very blessed that we have a group of players that take academics very seriously. And um, it's nice not having to worry about that, you know, as a coach, um, because, you know, we know that they're going to take care of business in the classroom every day. Well, we want to just again uh, express our gratitude to Coach Donna Finney, HBU's head women's basketball coach, Division One. Now that says a whole different zip code in athletics in the mm -hmm. United States, doesn't it? It does, and it is for for HBU. It's a great platform um, because you know we play the top teams in the nation. Last year we opened up at. Uh, Baylor and Texas, who were both top five teams. And so you're playing on the biggest stage. So give, him, give me an idea of the, the teams that you actually play. Um, well, we played Baylor and Texas last year. Yep. Um, next year, we're actually going to uh, Texas Tech, uh, Oklahoma State, Wichita State. You know, so in the non-conference, we're playing against top 25 teams regularly. And these are top performing athletes yeah. you're contending with. Yeah. They, and they don't get any better than those schools. Exactly. And so you're going to be challenged athletically uh, playing a Division One program. And I think we, we try to do a good job of, you know, mixing up our schedule so that our girls get to get to see different parts of the country, but be challenged against some of the best teams in the country as well. Um, I think if you talk to some of the players, they'll say that we had a very young team last year, a lot of freshmen, we had eight freshmen. And to open up at Baylor was a, a very interesting experience <laughs> because, you know, having a top five team in the country uh, with as much size as they did, it was overwhelming for some of our players. But, sure. But what a, you know, an amazing opportunity as a collegiate athlete to say that you've played on that stage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the the preparation uh, to get to Division One. I, I mean, how many games are there per season? Um, obviously depends if you go postseason yeah. to the tournament, but um, this year we play 28 games, um, regular season and games. And how many on the road, how many at home? Uh, it varies, but mostly half and half. Yeah. Mostly. Um, but, you know, I think as we kind of grow as a, a program and we're, you know, we obviously want to try and secure more home games so that we can get the students into Sharp Gym and give us that home court advantage. And I, I think that's something that is very special about HBU. Um, you know, we have something different that no one else in our conference has, and and that Sharp Gym can be the noisiest place to play <laughs> in our conference. <laughs> and and our students get very very passionate about our basketball teams, and um, you know it's a great place to play when we have everybody in there supporting our teams, and you know we have um, you know a great support from our band, from our cheer and dance teams, and. Um, you know, we just are thankful for the support they give us because it really does help the players on the court and, and being in sharp and it being very noisy like that is a definite home court advantage. <laughs> definite. I remember the movie Hoosers that mm -hmm. was filmed in a, in a gym that I spoke at to the high school in. Mm -hmm. And it was a smaller gym, but man, it was mm -hmm. one of a kind. And yeah. in Indiana, of course, it's, it's renowned yeah. as is the gym here. Now, if you would, take us for a moment into your life, I mean, your faith life, because I know that plays a part here at HVU. It definitely does. And I, I grew up, you know, with great role models and my grandparents. Um, and I still remember as a child, well, I have a lot of cousins and, uh, you know, we would go to my grandparents at home at the, on a Sunday. and. My, my grandparents were such great examples for all of us in their faith, and they tried to share their faith with all of, all of us cousins. Um, and everything that they did, um, they set the example in the way that you should lead your life. And I think that's the biggest thing for me in my faith is that I wanna make sure that I do things the right way because I'm, a, I'm an example for our players, mm -hmm. and not just our players, for people that come to watch the games. and. You know, we had a, a group of uh, young upward cheerleaders at our game on Saturday. They were probably, I would say, between seven and ten years old. 
yeah. and they cheered their hearts out for our team on Saturday. Um, and I got a really nice email this morning from their cheer uh, coach and she just talked about the example that our players and staff um, were for, for those kids um, in doing things the right way, competing the right way and, and conducting ourselves the right way. Uh, and for me, you know, obviously the faith-based part of HBU is so important. I've seen firsthand how it can impact our players and help them through times that they're challenged. Um, and I've seen how I can help our players in that way as well. Um, and it's a very special place to be because of that. It's a very special place to be in. I don't think, I think we're in a very unique situation in that respect from an athletic standpoint because we really have an opportunity to help kids grow in their faith um, and to help them be the best they can be as role models because they forget sometimes that they are role models and there's always someone watching. Yes, and you know, whether it's NFL, NBA, Division One, there's a lot of stories of great athletic talents that never mm -hmm. developed values and faith in their journey yep. and, um, and they wreck their life. Yeah. And so HBU and the athletic program gives them something they don't get in, in just any old university. Absolutely, and, and I think the biggest thing is we encourage each individual to follow their own path, you know, and to create their own path. And uh, I'll use uh, one of our former players as an example. You know, the group of kids that we had two or three years ago, a lot of them wanted to go and play basketball after they had finished here. And so obviously through my contacts, it was easy to help them do that. You know, we've still got one playing in Germany and um, we've had girls play in Australia and um, Spain and Ireland and different places, you know. So they use basketball as a tool. But one individual, that was her plan initially. She kept talking about, you know, I really want to go and play and that's what I really want to do. And she had a great senior year. She led the nation in rebounding her senior year wow. um, and could have gone and played. And one day on a day like today when it was raining actually, she ran up to my car and knocked on the window and I was about to pull out the parking lot. But we sat there for 45 minutes and we talked and she talked about how her faith was leading her somewhere else. And she felt that, you know, she was struggling to make a decision. And so we talked and talked and she's actually right now um, the leader for the World Race mission trip. And um, she's out there leading a group of young people um, as they, they're building homes um, in Africa at the moment for um, you know families that really need help over there. She's gone through the process herself um, and then she decided she wanted to go and help other people um, on their path and I think you know just being here allowed her to follow that. She had a lot of support from people obviously our own staff but you know through FCA here um, which she was very active in um, and we have a great FCA yes. group here. Um, Lo Hughes, has, who's been with us this year, has been fantastic. And, you know, her connection with our kids has really helped some of them. And I see that firsthand um, to follow their faith, but also to make the right decisions and to be the role models that they are. You know, it's critical in the age in which we live. I, I, mm -hmm. I think about the headlines that I scan every day, and it's mm -hmm. just unthinkable things. You yeah. know, we're reeling from this shooting in Parkland, Florida. And yeah. uh, I was at Columbine the other day with uh, one of the survivors of that shooting. And, you know, when you can take a student and send them to Houston Baptist University, and give them division one sports, but also the underpinnings that all of the coaches, all of the faculty embrace Jesus mm -hmm. Christ mm -hmm. unapologetically yeah. and yet do it respectfully. Absolutely. You know, we're not ramming religion down anybody's throat. Yeah. Um, living their life like you are coach in a way that, that people want to know more, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And we want that from our players. We, you know, I, I just sent them the email that I received this morning and sure. told them how proud I was of them that they have made an impact in these young kids' lives and that they will be remembered for that. That one act of walking across and having a face-to-face -face conversation with a young girl who you may have just inspired that young woman without even really knowing the impact that you've had. Um, and that's, we are so big on that here in our program. And, and I think, you know, across the athletic department, uh, we do a great job of just molding and encouraging our athletes to be the best people that they can be. 
And Upward, just for those who are not familiar with that, is a children's ministry, the Upward Basketball, mm -hmm. Upward Cheerleading. Yep. So you had some young uh, yep. ladies that were Upward Cheerleaders. Yep. Uh, great yeah. program. Yeah. So great. Just before we close, uh, Harvey, uh, Hurricane Harvey would go down in the annals of history, the yeah. 800 year flood. You, as a, a coach in a basketball squad, responded in again another unique way. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, we. Um Having never gone through a hurricane, <laughs> it was my first time. We don't have we don't have those in Scotland, so um, <laughs> we, have, we have very bad weather, but n not hurricanes. Um, so when it happened, we actually only had two players and three managers on campus during the storm, um, and I'm sure that they can tell you and their parents probably too. I probably text and call them, you know, more during that storm than than I normally do in four years of collegiate life, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I live very close to the school, so I was checking on them constantly, and you know, we were making sure they they had what they needed. And um, but immediately after the storm, we realized there was so much devastation in the area and so much need. And uh, we set up a children's donation point in our office, and we had people from the neighborhood come in and donate. And I was overwhelmed by how many people in the neighborhood around HBU donated to wow. us. It was incredible. We had truckloads of children's books, toys, clothing, um, you know, diapers, etc., going down to shelters because people were coming in and donating and giving. And it really connected us with the neighborhood. I mean, we now have had people come to our games that we met during the storm. Oh, how cool. Um, that we didn't even, they didn't really realize that we had a basketball program, you know, but they have young kids and they connected with us because of that. Um, once we'd done that, we got involved with um, some elderly people um, in the Westbury area and we initially went over to help in one home and ended up helping with four different homes um, helping those elderly people who had nobody else to help them uh, just tear out their you know their sheetrock and um, unfortunately throw a lot of things away that they lost in the storm and then just spend time with them um, I learned how to play dominoes properly for the first time. Um, I met a new friend who's 89 years old, and Carol's one of the most lively people I've ever met. But just, you know, tried to help where we could, and our girls were incredible. I think they learned so much more from helping after the storm than they would care to admit. You know, I could see the change in some of their, you know, understanding how blessed they are to have what they have when they saw so many people who Yes. lost everything um, so it was a very you know incredible experience to be part of but just thankful that we could help some people and that the HBU family could I mean every morning we went out we saw the track team leaving men's basketball the soccer teams heading out I mean it was such a, a great effort from our athletes to go and help after the storm Fantastic. So good. Donna Finney is the HBU head women's basketball coach, and you need to check out the entire athletic program and particularly the women's basketball program. You can do that at HBUHuskies.com for more information. And you can also call 281-649-3211, our admissions, and learn uh, HBU has a place for you and uh, 17 Division I sports at Houston Baptist University. Donna, we are so proud of you and so thankful for your leadership Thank on you. our campus. Promise you'll come back and talk to us. Definitely, we'd love to. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you.